Hello and welcome back to the NBA DFS Slate Breakdown for opening night, October 22nd. I am Tyler at uh, flat Tyler 23 on your DFS sites. Going to be breaking down your opening day uh, lineups and the slate using the LineStar platform. Now, if you have not already, come join us at LineStar. $39.99 per month gets you access to everything we do. We also do have a seven-day free trial through Android or iOS App Store. Go through that. If you've never used us before, give us a little trial, then sign on up and come join us for the season because it's going to be a good one. Please like, comment, and subscribe to the video, and let's jump into this. All right. So we are going to go position by position. I will start over on DraftKings and use a little of my two cents for uh, FanDuel as well as we break it down. So for point guard, our highest owned player on the slate right now, 3,600 is Miles McBride. Now, 3,600 is way too cheap. I do like him. He is expected to be the sixth man coming off the bench. And if you know anything about, uh, you know, Coach Thibs is he runs a very short rotation. So even being a sixth man, he should get solid run. 3,600 is just way too cheap. Uh, so pricing is pretty soft today, though. So I think there's some other ways we can go as well. He is super high owned, but high owned for a decent reason. I don't mind some Miles McBride. Now, got a bunch of different people I want to talk to about here. We got uh, D'Angelo Russell and Austin Reeves. So there is a new system in LA uh, with JJ Redick. Now, we all know that it is still going to be in a Le LeBron James run offense. But I wouldn't be surprised if the perimeter players had a little bit bigger of a role in uh, with J.J. Redick there. He's going to want to get some guys some uh, open looks to shoot that three ball. So I think uh, D'Angelo Russell and Austin Reeves are both uh, interesting and totally fine with either of them. Uh, Derek Brunt or Derek. I was going to talk about Derek White, but I actually wanted to talk right about uh, Jalen Brunson. Jalen Brunson and uh, D'Angelo and Reeves are my highest owned at the guard position right now. I like Jalen Brunson. Once again, he's going to have the ball in his hand a ton. He's done very well versus Boston. The only thing here is that he does have Cat with him now, which Cat is going to take some of the usage away. Maybe he doesn't quite have that, you know, 70 point upside that he had last season. However, he is still going to be solid. He's going to play a lot of minutes. I like Jalen Brunson and I like the fact that he's going a little under owned. Then I wanted to talk about Dante DiVincenzo and Mike Connolly. So in the preseason, they were very, very, very limited with Mike Connolly's minutes. I think if they start the season like that, Dante DiVincenzo is the one that will likely benefit from that the most, getting some extra run. Now, they could, it could just be because, you know, Connolly's an older player. He doesn't really need the preseason to get ready. He's just got to go through the motions a little bit, play a little bit to get that game speed up and that feel up. And, you know, playing 16, 18 minutes a night was probably enough for that. So there is a chance that Connolly could just jump right up to the, you know, 28 minute ish that he was playing last season. If that's the case, I do like Connolly. If they're more limited with his minutes, then I think Dante DiVincenzo is pretty interesting. So, um, you know, that's, I think, one of the scenarios and one of the lineup differences that we can talk about on this opening slate and realize that we know a lot less than we think we know about these teams and the Minnesota uh, they had some player changes Knicks had some player changes Lakers are essentially the same team however they had a coach change so there could be some rotation changes there those are our major points to look different today now let's uh, get over to FanDuel 
Our highest owned, Jalen Brunson, Mike Conley. I think on FanDuel, this Conley and DiVincenzo thing is a little more interesting because Conley is one of the higher owned, whereas uh, DiVincenzo, he's not point guard eligible on FanDuel, but he's low owned uh, at shooting guard and small forward here, which makes you know that decision a little bit interesting. Uh, Miles McBride over here is going low owned and should be probably more owned on uh, FanDuel than he is so far. Now, getting over to shooting guard on DraftKings, Miles McBride's highest, Austin Reeves. I love the spot for him. He's uh, next. Derek White started the season last year on absolute fire. Uh, I think this matchup is a difficult one for him, though, so I'm not quite as high on him. Anthony Davis is one of my highest owned players. I really like his spot and I'm going to have a ton of him. Uh, there's no cat. I expect his usage to go up a little bit this year. Another year into the league, he is bona fide superstar. And I think Julius Randle just takes less usage than cat does. So definitely like Anthony Edwards. And if Mike Connolly is not playing, Edwards will have the ball in his hand a little bit more, which is definitely very interesting. And when I said Mike Connolly not playing, I mean just not playing quite as much because um, he's going to play. But the difference is, does he play 24 minutes or does he play 28? If he plays 24, Edwards' usage probably goes up just slightly more. So definitely interested uh, there. Getting over to FanDuel shooting guard, we got Austin Reeves and Mikel Bridges as the two highest owned. I got to say, Mikel Bridges is one of my uh, fades over on FanDuel right now. I'm not getting ton a ton of them right now. Uh, he's going to play a lot of minutes because it's that Thibs system, but that shot just does not look great. And he has a lot of other playmakers in New York that he just didn't have with him in uh, New York, but for the Nets, not the Knicks. So my uh, Miles McBride, I definitely want more of over here. And Dante DiVincenzo is an interesting kind of pivot spot. If he plays more minutes because Connolly plays less, that one becomes interesting also. And then it looks like Max Christie is probably going to get some minutes off the bench. So he is a little bit interesting on uh, either side as a flyer. We don't know this Lakers rotation very well yet one of these guys off the bench could get solid minutes and Christie is one of the ones that could possibly do it. Getting over to small forward on DraftKings, we got Josh Hart coming in at the highest owned, followed by Jason Tatum. So Josh Hart has said that he is not going to be looking for his shot as much this season. So you got to be a little bit worried about those scoring totals. Uh, the other thing is he's not going to play 40 minutes a game to start the season like he was ending the season last year. He probably comes down a little bit, maybe 35, 36. It is still Coach Thibs, so he's going to play a lot. Uh, but he's going to be heavy on you know the assists, the rebounds, steals, blocks, that kind of stuff, but light on scoring. He's not looking for a shot as much this year. And with that, I think it might be hard for him to really pay off 5,600 at 50% owned. OG Ananobi is one of my favorite spots this uh, in today's, today's game. I have a ton of him, and I think he's going under-owned. He will be looking for a shot. He's going to play a decent amount. He can add a bunch in rebounds and with steals and blocks. I'm very interested in some OG, especially if uh, Mikel Bridges' shot is really that off. OG may be uh, really asked to fire it away. So my next, uh, next highest owned is Jason Tatum. I mean, there's no Porzingis. He's going to take a lot of that. He averaged 1.31 fantasy points per minute without uh, Porzingis last, se last season, and he's in a decent spot here so i don't mind uh taking some jason tatum in this spot and small forward over on FanDuel. hachimera is too cheap on FanDuel. 4200 he's gonna play 26 to 28 minutes and he, he's just too cheap 57 percent owned over here 
The, the question for me, though, is do you want to play Hachimura or Miles McBride? Similar price, similar you know minutes they're expected to play. I would probably side with McBride in that head-to-head. -head. Uh, both guys are very interesting, though, and they play different, different positions, so you kind of got to decide uh, which one to go there. Uh, Josh Hart coming in 48% owned. I think that's a little too high. I do like Reeves. Bridges is fine absolutely love Anthony Edwards and he's going a little under owned as well as OG as we talked about now getting over to power forward on DraftKings Josh Hart still there Nas Reed is one of my highest owned 49% owned there's no Carl Anthony Towns they got Julius uh, Randall and Gobert he's still going to come off the bench and play a bit he played a you know mostly Let's see, what was it? It's 26 minutes a game last season. Over the last 20, he played 23 minutes a game. I think you can pretty much expect that he's going to be there 20, 20 to 24 minutes uh, tonight. And we know he can really feel, fill the stat sheet up if he gets it going. And Lakers have been bad versus centers or power forwards for a while. So I'm interested in taking some shots here. Now, if he is super high owned, it's an interesting pivot spot because his minutes are likely going to be a limited, a little bit limited. And then Jason Tatum, OG, talked about those. Those are two of my favorite at uh, the point guard or point power forward position. Uh, another spot that I do want to talk about, and I, I, uh, well, on DraftKings it works for power forward or for center. And then on uh, FanDuel, it's just on center. But the Al Horford situation, it's another one like Mike Connolly where he played very, very little in preseason. He is expected to start tonight. And, you know, you, you have the same situation as Minnesota where do they jump in and just give him his 26, 28, 30 minutes uh, a game? Or are they a little careful with him and – let Cornette or Tillman play a little bit more. I think this is another little pivot spot. Tillman's 4,100. My favorite, however, would be Cornette to uh, take the role at 3,900. Cornette is, you know, a almost a fantasy point per minute guy when uh, he gets that extra run and definitely would have some interest in him. If he's able to get 22, 24 minutes, he could absolutely break a six X and he's going a little lower owned. So the Horford, Horford is one of those, uh, another little pivot spots. Julius Randall, only 13% owned. It's all up to you how much you think he's going to play in the first game back. Remember he did uh, have his shoulder injury he is expected to play tonight, but uh, we'll see how it goes. He's got to work on chemistry. got to work on a lot of things, but we have seen really big games from him and going this low owned at 8K does make him pretty interesting. On to FanDuel, Rui Hachimura, obviously one of my higher own. Nas Reed is as well. Uh, OG, I think, is uh, my main pivot over here into the center spot all right so we already talked about the luke cornett and al horford situation i think that's an interesting one another is uh the lakers i do expect anthony davis to play a ton of minutes but they are limited on big men so i would not be surprised if uh jackson hayes plays a little bit more than we are expected he can play power forward or center just like anthony davis is so i wouldn't be totally shocked if both of them played a little bit they do have uh julius randall and gobert on the other side so they may want you know some extra bigs even though randall isn't a big four he does still have some muscle, muscle, can push him around. LeBron can absolutely guard him um, and match that, you know, size and uh, and strength. But uh, there is at least a path to Hayes seeing a little bit more money, uh, more minutes than expected. And at 3,500, it's a little bit interesting. He is definitely one of the cheap guys I am a little interested in. 
Uh, Nas Reed, Rudy Gobert, I would not play both of them together, but one or the other is an interesting spot for me, and I'm definitely interested in both. Carl Anthony Towns is one of my highest owned players on the slate tonight. 7,800 for him playing the center spot. You know, personally, I think he is the 1A and Brunson's the 1B. Brunson's been there for a while, so maybe Brunson is the 1A and Cat is the 1B, but I love this spot for Cat, and I expect him to be a 10K player in no time. I think 7,800 is just way too cheap for him. Anthony Davis, I think he's going to come out just playing a ton of minutes. They just don't have that many bigs. It is him and Hayes down low. Davis likely gets a ton of minutes right off the start, and I definitely like him. He was finishing the year in the playoffs playing a ton, but even before that, you know, 35, 38 minutes was where he was at, and I expect that from the start. He uh, is my highest projected player. He is projected the most by six points. If you look at the consensus, he's – two points higher than anybody in the consensus. He definitely makes a lot of sense to have a lot of. Personally, I still will have more cat than AD, but I love the outlook for AD uh, tonight. And then uh, on, oh, one other thing I wanted to talk about with Gobert, just his history versus the Lakers. He's had a lot of really, really good games. Put up 45 and 48 versus them. The season before, he had 250 burgers. He absolutely, versus AD and Hayes, can get to work on those boards. And there's no cat there. So there's a little bit less competition for those rebounds. I know Julius Randle is there, who obviously is a force on the boards. But I think uh, no cat will add a little bit more usage to Gobert this season. So I do think he's interesting. He's likely going a little under-owned. Uh, definitely am interested in him at center, but Cat is just taking way too much of my uh, ownership there to have a ton of go bare. So that'll do it for us today, guys. Quick run through of position by position. As the season goes on, we'll use more of the team defense uh, tool and some matchup rankings just right now. We got no data because it's a new season. We will definitely start getting and digging into this data as the show goes on. Hope you guys have a great night. Happy, happy opening day, but tomorrow is the real day we get going. And uh, just little show notes for you guys. I'm going to be doing this show Monday through Friday, as long as there is uh, five games are over, I will do it some four games. If I got a lot going on, I may, you know, skip a couple uh, four game nights, but I will uh, definitely be here a lot all season long. Hope you guys enjoyed the show. Please comment, like, and subscribe to our channel. You guys have a good one. Peace.